Now that we have a quorum, we'll get started. Um, I'd like to call the order the October 12, 2011 meeting of the Urban Design Commission. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Douglas Gazek. James Doherty. Here. Doherty. Here. Jim Sawhill. Here. Andrew Garcia. Here. Jeff Dinwiddie. Here. Thomas Tiber. Here. Steve Pratt. Lori Abel. Thank you. We do have a quorum. Uh, we have no minutes tonight. Our uh, first order of business is a special order of business. <clears throat> do we have any disclosures? Any disclosures tonight? Uh, Mr. Garsha. Um, in regards to case 2011-119 South Anchorage High School, I'm just disclosing that the company I work for has a job order contract with the Anchorage School District. This project exceeds that monetary value for the work we would do, but I'm just disclosing that the company I work for does do work for the Anchorage School District. Okay. Do you have any financial interest in the case that's before us tonight? No. Thank you. Um, well, I guess with that disclosure, then I'm going to need a, a, a motion to direct Mr. Garcia to, to participate. Mr. Tybor. And yes, I'd Mr. like to make a motion, uh, Mr. Chair, for uh, Mr. Garcia to participate. Okay. Uh, would you like to speak to that motion? Uh, yes, uh, I actually intend to support the motion. Uh, I believe Mr. Garcia stated that he does not have a direct financial interest in this case, and uh, I intend to import, uh, support the motion for him to participate. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Doherty, do you have anything to add? Okay. Is there any objection to the motion? Seeing none, that passes. Um, any other disclosures? Uh, apparently not. That brings us to the next uh, special order of business, which is case 2011-119 South Anchorage High School. Um, we received an informational item uh, from the school district, uh, providing an information on the buffer they're planting uh, around the stadium. Uh, is there any uh, uh, questions of the petitioner uh, with this information? Um, I don't believe we're required to act on this. Is that correct? It's just information provided to us. Okay, so no actions required. Um, with no questions or clarifications from the applicant, we'll uh, move on. Thank you for the information. Um, that brings us to the consent agenda. We don't have any resolutions for approval or site plans under the consent agenda. Um, there was some discussion before we opened the hearing as to whether uh, the first item under our regular agenda should have properly been under the consent agenda. Um, but I guess I had some questions on that item anyway and intended to pull it. So, uh, staff, could you provide us a, a, a brief presentation on the case 2011-75, Alaska Housing Finance Corp, final site plan, landscape plan, approval, and public facility? Uh, yes, if the commission wishes, I can uh, do that. The, uh, this is the second time the project has been before the commission. They intend to build an office uh, on Boniface Parkway near DeBar intersection. Their IA staff had a number of questions regarding the planting plan. If you'll uh, look at uh, page four, those are there are six of those that um, Landscaping issues that need to be reworked, and um, the first time the commission saw it, there were uh, likewise a lot of um, landscape planting plan issues. Some of those have been resolved, yet new ones have arisen, um, and those are outlined on pages four and five. They still, to my knowledge, don't have a shared access agreement, nor do they have a driveway permit from DOT. Um, to my knowledge, they don't have a um, uh, permission to install a septic system or enter into a sewer line extension with AWU. And to my knowledge, they don't have uh, permission to do a water line extension with AWU um, or approval from DEC to construct a well. Thank you. Is the applicant uh, here? Could you please come forward, please?
I had a couple of questions about your application. Um, oh, could you state your name for the record, please? Sure. My name is Matt Wilson with Rody and Associates Architects. I'm filling in for Alan Rody of Rody and Associates Architects. Sure. Um, thank you. Um, in in your narrative uh, that you you provided that addressed the the comments that the the board previously had, um, you had a couple items that. Uh, um, you know, the shared access agreement, um, this will be accomplished before the U next UDC meeting. Has that been accomplished? It's still in the process, actually. Okay. And you're negotiating with Safeway, uh, and that was going to be accomplished before the next meeting? Has, has that been done? Uh, we're still negotiating. Actually, HFC and Safeway are still negotiating those agreements. Okay. Uh, there's been no opposition from Car Safeway. Uh, except for they want to, regarding the uh, MOA access agreement and the shared use of the fire hydrant. Um, but they will not proceed with those two documents until they figure out the maintenance agreement that isn't required through the municipality, but it's something they need to do owner to owner. And Car Safeway won't start any of this paperwork until that is finalized. Okay. So that's where we're at in that process. Um, the next uh, item was the water line extension with AWW would be resolved before the October meeting. Right. And we have actually um, placed, um, instead of doing the water line extension, um, AHFC has decided to move forward with the well. Okay. Water well. All right. And then my next question was in the, the drawings that you submitted. Um, there's sheet CC 1.0, and that shows some uh, grading on the east side of the uh, the building that encroaches into the undisturbed lands, uh, natural or 25 foot setback that's uh, retain that's supposed to retain the natural vegetation. I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Sure, there's, there's grading indicated um, within the 25-foot setback on the east side of the building. So that area on one plan is showed to be natural vegetation to not be disturbed, and on another plan it shows it as being graded and a drainage swale put in. And then I don't see anything on the landscape plan for revegetating that area. Okay, that would actually be accomplished. And... Normally, Are you talking on the east side of the parking lot? East side of the building. East side of the building. Building and parking lot. Oh, West Side, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. West Side, okay, now that makes more sense. <laughs> I'm not seeing it here. North. So I guess I'm just looking for clarification. Are you going to be retaining that natural vegetation, or are you going to be grading that area in... So I believe the area does have to be regraded uh, to create a swale to get to the catch basin. Okay. And so then um, I think it would be. And we may need to modify our landscape yeah, plan to accommodate that. Yeah, modify the landscape plan to indicate the, the landscaping that's going to go in there. And, and staff, is that natural, uh, retaining that natural vegetated area, is that a uh, something that petitioner had decided to do, or is that a requirement of the plat? Um, what landscaping would normally be required in that area, just visual enhancement? I'd have to check on that, but I believe the petitioner had decided to retain that natural buffer. Okay. So that was, that was something they were trying to accomplish. Right. Yeah. It's actually not required that much of it's required, but that's what um, we're going to try to retain. retain. Okay. Um, would you have objection to an additional condition of approval to uh, update the landscape plan for the revegetation of that disturbed area? Well, 
we can make that accommodation, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions of the applicant from? Mr. Doherty? Yeah, just, just some clarifications. I, I'm, you've got a 25-foot setback that's listed. I'm looking at LS 2.0, but um, that appears to be retained between Boniface and the site development. I was curious, that, that sort of a modification of the question that's already been asked. Is, is there a, a condition on the plat or something? Why, why do we list a setback? and say that it's naturally vegetated if there's no requirement for a setback. That's what's confusing for me. Because it does appear that you've gone to lengths to make sure that nothing happens in that setback. But it doesn't, it doesn't label what the setback is, it just says it's a 25-foot setback. And, and it appears as though there's, you know, like a bike path right-of-way or something is occurring inside that. There's, there's some graphic indication that something's there. I believe the 25-foot setback is actually the, um, the requirement on the PLI property. The thing that's really required for landscape there is the 8-foot visual enhancement landscaping. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? of the applicant? Apparently not. Thank you. Can I have a positive motion for approval of the final site plan and landscape plan? No one wants to take this one on. <laughs> Come out with a bang, James. Come on. <laughs> that's that's typically how we do it. If we can get a motion on the table, then we can discuss it. Um, in, unless there's some other desire for a motion other than approval. Um, Mr. Doherty, what, what do you have to say for yourself tonight? <laughs> I was just curious. The, the, it, it strikes me as strange that in, in providing site plan landscaping approval for final, that there are many aspects of the site design that are not yet resolved. If we had wetlands issues, we have right-of-way issues, we have access issues, um, they could fundamentally change what we're looking at. They typically are resolved before we would take action. And the packet suggested that they would be resolved before we took action, but they're not resolved. So I'm kind of thinking that the correct course of action would be to give the petitioner more time and delay this case so that those issues could be resolved before we make a, a final determination on the adequacy of the, of the plan. Um, but I'm not sure that that's something that's within our is, is that something that we would be able to do? And maybe that would prompt a question to the petitioner to see if there's time critical, time critical aspects. Why has this been rushed ahead of all of the normal approvals, I guess is my, my big overriding question. And, and the issues that you would like to see resolved before we took action are um, the access, driveway, Utility questions, are those the, the issues? Yeah, well, the utility one has somewhat re uh, uh, been resolved because they're now going to a well, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not sure what kind of impact that has since so much of what we had in our package was talking about extending water lines. Um, and, and maybe that's a straightforward thing, but access, if we can't get access from the neighbor, what is the plan? I mean, there isn't a... There isn't a right that this property owner has for access unless it's granted by the neighbor, correct? And if separate access has to be 
sought, that's going to have a fundamental impact on on what we're approving here. Yes. So it, it seems like that's a, a key piece that, that needs to be resolved. Okay. Um, hold on just a second. We'll, get, we'll give you a chance to, to ask the question. M Mr. Garcia? I guess you sort of touched on what I was going to ask is what are the – I think it would be good before we decide if this can progress or not to lay out which items are there are of concern. Um, like has been mentioned, the, the water service has been resolved. They're going to do a well. But, I mean, in regards to the act, driveway access, um, the petitioner indicated that they're in agreement with the cars got – well, actually, it's – Safeway owns this property, but they're in agreement with Safeway and are just working out the management agreement details. And um, I, I miss maybe the, the other petitioner might be able to shed some light on where they're at in that process. Yeah, um, I might. I'm Alan Rohde. And, uh, yeah, please state your name for the record. Alan Rohde, Rohde and Associates Architects. Thank you. Now, regarding the, the site access, the way that this works with the Department of Transportation is it's their preference and desire to have only a single access point onto this lot and that it be shared, that the access be shared between the two lots. Now, as it's currently drawn and what currently exists, if you look at the plat and the, or an aerial photo or anything that demonstrates how this configuration works, CARS is actually encroaching onto our property as much as we'll be encroaching onto them by utilizing the shared access. The Department of Transportation specifically puts these access points that are 24 feet wide straddling the property line uh, to serve each of the two properties. And what they had originally told us was you need a driveway permit. The driveway permit should have been applied for, but since the car's property was established back in the 60s, I think, um, this process for establishing a driveway permit didn't even exist back then. So no one through time had ever processed a driveway permit. Well, at this point, it's become, you know, a dotting an I or crossing a T process that this has to be done, the, and, and so the paperwork's in for the driveway permit. The access agreement is not required by the Department of Transportation, but rather is required by the municipality. And I'm not certain, you know, what the legal ramifications are, why they ask for this agreement between the two property owners. But the way that this, this started out, uh, we petitioned Cargotstein for this uh, agreement between the two properties, and they started worrying about maintenance agreements and all types of things like this that had to do with uh, liabilities involved and who was going to care for the snow removal and the maintenance of the pavement and all this kind of thing, which the municipality neither cares about nor wants in their agreement. They want their PAT standard access agreement signed. Okay? So we're currently in the process of working between AHFC and the Cargotstein entity and their attorneys to have them sign the municipal agreement and have that done in its simplest form that the muni will accept. And then they can work out all their maintenance issues and whatever in a separate agreement because it's really irrelevant for what you know you folks need. But ultimately, at the end of the day, zoning won't approve our permit, and they're the ultimate uh, approval authority on us getting our building permit until that access agreement is signed. So I wouldn't understand really why that should hold up what we're doing here in terms of site plan approval because there's a second check and balance to stop the building permit if it's not taken care of and it needs to be resolved one way or the other regardless of how in-depth the attorneys decide to get over who's going to pave what when. So I wouldn't see the access agreement being an issue. And you, you touched briefly on water service and that kind of thing and I think that's pretty well been resolved. And Are, is there another Stewart issue that's resolved? out there? I, had a, I did have a question. So Cars Gottfried owns the property? I thought... To the north. They own the property to the north. Oh, okay. And then AHFC owns the property to the south. Okay, because I thought Safeway owned the property to the north. Same thing. Okay. Yeah, it's the same entity. Mr. Doherty, do you have any questions of the applicant? Well, or yeah, I mean, I mean, just to sort of clarify why I'm concerned that if you if you don't have a final agreement with your neighbor, 
and he wants to pile his snow where you've put your driveway, and you have the option of putting your driveway farther to the east, um, and that becomes a, an arguing point. I mean, it is, it's not resolved. And so um, – Well, the DOT won't let us put the driveway anywhere else, and they won't get a, give us a second – no, They won't let you put the driveway farther – no. Along this back driveway, why does the DO? That's not a DOT right. Well, first of all, we can't locate it further onto the Safeway property because that would be crossing a private property further back in. Well, you, I mean, but you don't have an. My point is, there's many ways to access this site, right? And it's all a matter of who will grant who a permit. But you don't have any of the permits. So I would disagree that there aren't many ways to access the site because it's a DOT road that we're trying to gain access to. And the DOT is only going to give us access at that one point. And this has been addressed with Tucker Hearn, and I'm certain that it's in that bulk of information that originally came with this uh, through Scott Thomas and Tucker Hearn, that they wouldn't give us another access point onto Boniface, and I'm certain that we're not going to get another access through the rear of Safeway's lot. Is there anything critical in your schedule that would uh, uh, cause you a problem if we delayed action on this until your access was resolved and agreements were in place with your with your neighbor? Well, I would have, apparently they have let the contract to the contractor to do the initial site work. So I'd be speaking on behalf of the owner and the ramifications of that, because I know they've given them a number of days or whatever for performance. And that was just issued a couple days ago to, as a notice to proceed to start the contract. So the delay would be affecting the owner, and I wouldn't be able to speak on behalf of them. But again, what I'm letting you know is that zoning won't approve this without the access agreement in the plans review department. So. It seems a moot point to make it a double condition. So, so there's currently a contract in place to do the site preparation? There is. Um, are they going to do the foundation immediately? Uh, that would be up to the contractor. It's a footing and foundation permit that's been let and utilities and site work. So. Wow. Without UDC approval, that's interesting. Uh, Ms. Fergus? Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, um, the only thing that they've been approved for at this point is a footing and foundations permit, and we uh, have said that they cannot get any other permit until all these several um, circumstances are resolved, until we see paperwork from DEC that they have permission to construct a well, until we see permission from DEC that they have permission to a, to construct a septic system, or AWU has granted them a sewer line extension, um, until they've got a driveway permit from DOT, and, and until they've got a shared access agreement, they won't go any further with their project. They're aware of this. So I think that answers the question for the UDC. If they were to postpone it until these issues are resolved, would it slow them down? No, it wouldn't slow them down because they can't get any further until these issues are resolved. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Doherty, do you have additional comments or questions for the applicant? No. Thank you. Is there any other comments or questions for the applicant? Apparently not. Thanks. Thanks. So that brings us back to what do we want to do tonight? We got two choices. We can uh, have a motion for approval and see if it passes, um, or a motion to postpone. Uh, if we do have a motion to postpone, I would ask for specific direction of the uh, petitioner to uh, on what needs to be accomplished before this comes back in front of the board.
We have a motion from Mr. Garcia. I'll, I'll have a motion to approve. Subject to. Oh. Okay. Subject to staff's conditions on page. Page four. Uh, or five and six. Four, five, and six. Yep. So that's conditions one through seven. Do you have any additional uh, conditions or modifications to what staff has recommended at this point? I don't have any at this okay. time unless anyone would like to add any. Thank you. Just wanted to get that clarified. And we have a second for Mr. Dinwiddie. Mr. Garcia, would you speak to your motion? I move to approve case number 2011-75 based on the staff conditions mentioned through page four through six, based on um, the Anchorage 2020 Comprehensive Plan, policy number 44, design and build public improvements for long-term use, and policy number 50, health Healthy, mature trees and forested areas shall be retained as much as possible. Thank you, Mr. Dinwiddie. Do you have any additional comments or findings uh, for this case? Yeah, I think that uh, there's enough checks and balances. I, you know, I understand the DOT right-of-way process. I've pulled many DOT permits for driveways, and and they're spot on. There's, this is the only way in and out of this. The DOT is either going to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down and likeliness of them giving a thumbs down on a uh, existing permit is slim. So I, I think that as long as, uh, <clears throat> as long as staff recommendations are met and <clears throat> I think that uh, we recommend to approve. Thank you. Mr. Doherty. Yeah, I guess I would uh, agree with the with the motion, and I think with the uh, the conditions that are set forth, um, which all state that these uh, the permits have to be obtained. And I guess just thinking ahead, if they didn't get the permits obtained and they had to do a redesign, it would come back in front of this board anyway. And there's no reason to delay the project in my mind. I am concerned though that there are a lot of inconsistencies in this application and. Um, but I will be supporting the motion. Thank you, Mr. Doherty. Uh, Ms. Ferguson, you have some comments? Yes, um, Mr. Chair, were, was somebody going to mention the uh, need to revegetate that area to the um, west side of the building that's going to be regraded? You mean the, uh, and I wasn't sure on Mr. Garsha, did, did you say Conditions one through seven. It sounded like you said two through four or something. Oh, I said all the conditions mentioned on pages four through six. Oh, okay. Instead of, it, it's sort of, you, there was the visual attraction of the landscaping, which discussed like six or seven numerous things that were non-compliant, like having the spruces too close to the building and then having different species and areas that were not um, compatible with that type of drainage. Okay. And so I just, instead of reading all of pages four through six, I just sort of summed up because you, there's those uh, visual attractiveness landscaping items and then there's the department recommendations and there's, there's multiple I see. items on those three pages. I, I don't, is that an appropriate means of addressing it instead of reading all the items or am I supposed to read them all? Um, you could have just said the conditions one through seven on pages Five and six would have been fine, but the well, way thought, you did it was okay. Yeah, because I thought the some of the items that were mentioned under the visual attractiveness of the landscaping, I can't remember if I read that in the roadie responses, if those had been addressed. I think those I were remember. covered under item two on, on condition number two. Oh, you're right. Yeah, they were bulleted. Thanks. So just for clarification, Mr. Garcia, your, your uh, motion is for approval subject to staff's conditions one through seven. And I guess that shown added, on pages five and six. Correct. correct? And I, I think, think we it, added item number eight, which was. Uh, we haven't added anything yet, and that's why I was asking oh, if you would like to add something. Sure. Thank you. 
Um, also based on the updating of the plans where it was pointed out earlier there was a conflict in design on the west side where they are showing retaining the vegetation and then in a conflicting drawing they are showing it being graded for swale. Okay. Um, so as, as a friendly amendment, Matt, I suggest wording is to provide visual enhancement landscaping in the disturbed areas west of the building. Would that be adequate, Ms. Ferguson, for keying you into that area? Yes. Um, yeah, the disturbed areas are the areas to be regraded. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And I guess that's being offered as a friendly amendment, the additional condition? Yes. Is that correct? Is there any objection to the second? No object. Yeah. Thank you. So we have an additional condition number eight, <laughs> and everyone's good to go. Is there any additional discussion on the motion? Uh, is there objection to the motion? Seeing none, that passes. Thank you. Um, getting back to our agenda, we have no public hearings tonight, no appearance requests. Um, I don't have any reports. I was intending to call Jay Jackson and see how our appointments are coming, and I, I haven't uh, made that call. Have you heard anything? No, I haven't heard anything. I was wondering about it, too, and I was hoping that you had called, so. Yeah, I was on my list for today, and then work got in the way. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, if you call, can you just let me know what she says? Okay, you know, what, I will. Uh, okay. I will. Hopefully we got somebody making us way through the system. And I guess I was, I was curious. I, I, it was my recollection that Mr. Doherty's uh, appointment was up tonight. Um, but evidently that's... No. <laughs> not I true. I haven't checked in through the official channels. Um. But yeah, you're, you're on until you get the letter that says, thanks for your service, and... <laughs> but then the guy who would issue these letters is taken off for a month, or... <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always not show up. I don't, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm behind in correspondence anyway. Yeah. I, I need to get it all cleared up. And then I had an item. Um, I've been away for a month, and I just uh, got back late last week. And um, I think Friday, um, they showed me a letter that had just come in the day before, actually kind of a packet, from a law firm in town, Ashburn and Mason. It's um, the neighbors, some of the neighbors around South High School have hired this firm to represent them. They are saying they are asking for a motion to rehear the case based on that they feel they have new evidence or circumstances where you all were not aware of new circumstances. And so the packet is about this thick. I'm in the process of writing a response to that um, motion to rehear the case. I mean, they're able to do it because under the reconsideration, they have 20, 21 days to, to do it. And so now they've, they're, they're doing it since you guys just heard the resolution or approved the resolution. So this is not, un not entirely unexpected that they weren't going to come back with, um, wanting to hear it. So, um, I should probably have that done tomorrow, you know, it has to be, re, you know, reviewed by those above me. Angela will take a look at it, and then Jerry will take a look at it. And if it looks all right, we'll send it out to you as a special courier um, because you've got to read their packet and you have to read my response. So we don't want you to hit you, you know, four days or a week before the case. So give you some time to read through it and make some notes so when you come back next month, and it would be, will be heard next month, you'll be ready to rock and roll. Um, my response is pretty brief. It's going to be just uh, three or four pages. Um, so next month we will have to act on whether to rehear it or not? Yeah, and so it will be your decision. And, you know, you read their packet, you'll read my response, and then it's your decision whether or not you think there's evidence enough to to justify rehearing, rehearing the case again. Okay. So, and if you decide not to rehear it, the matter's closed. Um, their only recourse at that point would be to go to superior court. Sure. So it will be up to you to decide to, if there's su sufficient evidence to. Okay. Seems like there was two that evening. We 
we had two things. One was a site plan approval, and the other one was the landscaping. I thought one had to do with the baseball, and the other was the football. Yeah, there was there was two different, yeah, two fundamentally different. Yeah. yeah, there were two motions, and you broke it up into two motions. Which is the one that they're trying to get reconsideration? The football one is the one they're not happy about. The baseball, I think they had, they don't have any problems over. It's the football because it attracts so many more people, and they're they're going to be lights. So, but you know, I I think they're designed to be directed down, and you know, not not shine shine you know beyond the edges of the field but uh, it's the noise impact i think they're primarily concerned with i thought it was determined that it's the since it's not um what is it called amplified noise right that, they brought that up okay. and what they're saying is that the udc and staff didn't adequately adequately consider the crowd noise the human noise but i thought that's it's not that's regulated by the noise rate. E exactly, to. and that's I say all that in my response. Yeah. Oh. And the other thing I was going to ask is, um, you know, James brought it up at the meeting a couple times to the people or the hearing, I should say, that they were asking us to act on things that were sort of outside of our jurisdiction, I guess you could right. say, or right. realm of reason. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, is this response they're having directed towards? you know, planning and zoning as well, or, you know, the appropriate jurisdictional bodies? Or that came up also, uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. McClintock fires a wide... <laughs> wide brush fire? <laughs> yeah, he yeah. fires the shotgun when he... Yeah, it's a shotgun yeah. approach. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He'll list everything. Yeah. Very thoroughly. Jeff, you have something you want to bring Yeah. Um, I think both you and I are gone next month. Uh, I know, I know I am. I'm gone too. I haven't <laughs> been gone for well, almost most of November, so uh, I'm not sure uh, uh, scheduling wise we should probably, that we might not have a quorum. I mean, at this early juncture, we might not even what be able to. What do we do when the chair and the vice chair are both? And, and I'd like to nominate James Doherty as backup. <laughs> 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 yeah, if the chair and vice chair are not here, then the UDC will elect a chair pro tem. Okay. James, you're going to be here next month, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, there's something that's like Shanghai comes to mind. <laughs> I, I did want to put a plug in that um, in in filling the, the seat, I, I, we, I think we should have an architect or two on the board. Yeah, I, I think when, when your seat is up, I would ask for an architect to replace you. Yeah. Or a couple, even. Um, <laughs> we, need a, definitely we also a need a landscape it'd be nice, architect. It'd be nice just to even get a landscape architect, you know. Right. It was, I mean, these are right. two crying needs that we need. I mean, there, I, I thought I remember, and I haven't seen the most recent version of Title 21, but we had put language in to try to suggest that it's not just a body made up of the public at large, but there was a deliberate attempt to try to get landscape architects, architects, and other Mm -hmm. you know, um, core professionals who mm -hmm. would be able to provide more insight into into some of the issues. Right. I think, I think Lori's a horticulturist. She says she knows something yeah. about plants, right? So, yeah, right. yeah. Lori's a horticulturist, yeah. yeah. And that's why I was hoping she'd get on and asked her to, to consider it. And yeah. Jeff's a landscape design build contractor, right, Jeff? There. Yeah, we could use a landscape architect, and hopefully mm -hmm. we have one in the queue. Right, uh, We'll right. see. I need to check with Jay and see where that that's going. And okay. uh, and and you're you're correct. We need another architect. Well, especially if, and who knows what what the future of UDC is. But if if we will be called on to be the appeal bo body for design standards um, that go beyond landscaping right. design standards, um, I think it's. I think that was the whole intent in the Title 21 rewrite, but who knows where that's going now, right. mm -hmm. um, was for this board to get more authority and do more site plan review and, and design review, because there's design standards now for commercial and residential. Um, so, you know, we're going to need to diversify our, our, our talents here, um, but who knows where it's going. We sunset in next year, right? Yeah, I think that's true. But, yeah. but um, I mean, 
This board has been sunsetting along with other boards. I mean, typically every three years it's supposed to sunset, and then we write up some paperwork. It goes to the assembly, they approve it, and it goes on. So that's been happening for years, but it's, it's not new. But but yes. <clears throat> and I, I, you know, I wanted to mention with the the case tonight, and I don't know if you could sort of sense my frustration, but. Um, you know the the lack of an arc of a of a landscape architect stamp, and what I sensed was a lot of sort of broken promises. You know, we will have this, we will have this, we will have this, and yeah. you'll be able to act on it. And time after time after time, they did not have it. Um, so it it just begs the question as to when an application is complete enough to even take action on. Mm -hmm. um, and it it isn't so much that going forward with this will result in a disaster or not. It's just the if you say you're going to do something and right. you're going to have it before the next meeting, right. I was expecting to see those things and I didn't. Right. And, you know, you would have thought that they would have called me and said, look, we haven't resolved these issues. We, we want to postpone, you know, in, in, you know, for a month or two until we get these resolved and then I'll let you know and we'll, you know, resubmit, let you know. And, you know, and then they would have the backup documents to show that they've gotten these permits, but of course that didn't happen. Yeah. I, I, I could sense your frustration. You know, I looked in that Title 21, though, and I didn't see anything about requiring a landscape architect stamp. I was looking through it because I remember you mentioned that when I saw this case again. I it's, started looking through that. And it's state law. It. I don't know if you were copied on a lot of the email chain that went back and forth after this case. But I had said in the meeting that I recalled that we had said as policy that we would like to see, because it's state law. Oh. So we went back into the state law and looked at, because I think that suggestion had been made that, well, an architect or an engineer could sign the drawings, and it would have the same weight as if a landscape architect. And the state law specifically says no to that. <laughs> it has to be. If you're involving plant materials and you're doing landscape design, it needs to be sealed by a landscape architect. Nothing that we do changes that, and nothing that the Muni does will change that. But evidently, what I'm hearing is the Muni is not enforcing that. So is it our responsibility to enforce what the Muni won't enforce? Um, and that's where I, you know, the whole thing just seems to be crazy at that point. Yeah, yeah, it's frustrating. I fought the battle several, several years ago trying to get, you know, our, Building there, building, you know, I think the planning department was willing to do it, but uh, under Ron Thompson, he was not, so uh, it never went anywhere. He's still there. But Ron Thompson is not in that position anymore, so uh, I don't know. be nice if the UDC wrote a letter saying that uh, it's a good idea that the Muni would follow state law recognize state law. Well, I was wondering about that because the person who basically said stand down was the head of the planning group department when it came up the last time. No, but, I think we were, planning department was ready to go forward with it. In fact, we sent out a letter saying that um, to all the architects and engineers offices in town, this is several years ago, saying that of, uh, beginning on this date, landscape plans will have to be stamped by a landscape architect. And then we got letters back from two architects in town saying, whoa, whoa, look at this state law. It says that architects can stamp it, engineers can stamp it, and they were objecting to it. So at that point... But the this, this state law doesn't say that. And I did a pretty exhaustive. Search. I know. I think you went a, bit, a little bit further that they didn't copy that section. Well, you, you know, saw, did you see, you got the email from Peter that actually yeah. had the section that was sent to planning for a ruling, and planning said it's not going to be something that we're going to push. Right. The state has jurisdiction. Because, and yeah, because we had already fought that battle and, and lost it. So, uh, you know, unless something happened. In development services, uh, we weren't going to get anywhere on that. But, you know, as I said, he's no longer in that position. And the person who is in it, I think, would be a lot more amenable. Well, I guess it, it, it begs the question of whether or not the review by this panel who is trying to gauge whether this work is in compliance with Title 21 and other regulations has an enforcement sort of role to say your 
submission doesn't meet the requirements of law, mm -hmm. where the muni won't do that, mm -hmm. the state apparently isn't doing that. Um, you know, I guess we could take it up with the licensing board, but that seems kind of yeah. heavy-handed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, licensing board's complaint-driven. They're not going to act on anything without a complaint. But I mean, who is going to change this? You'd, it'd have to be somebody. I mean, development services was the uh, roadblock last time. So if they were to agree that, because it, we're not the only, um, planning department's not the only landscape plans that are submitted. I mean, 10 more, 100 times more go directly to development services to that counter. And either, and they're not looking for, you know, stamp drawings. So we're just a fraction of the number of plans that come through the commission. Most of them never come. You know, they don't need to come to the commission. So um, we could say it, but, so, you know, so many more plans would go through and they wouldn't be required to be stamped by a landscape architect. Is that because of the size of the project? Like a residential house doesn't need a land? No, it doesn't need to anyway. Yeah, I know. So... Yeah, they make a distinction about commercial projects. Yeah. yeah. Multifamily residential needs a stamp, just like you need an architect for multifamily. What is it, three or four units four, or more? Four and more. You have to. So the same thing applies for landscape architect at that point. Because it's really frustrating for me and a total waste of my time to have to go, you know, through this thing and... You know, because the, the guy, that, who, Matt, who was at the podium earlier, I mean, I, I went, I tried to give him a crash course on how to do planting design. You should have seen it when it first came in. It was just, looked like a fourth grader did it. I mean, it was just ridiculous. And, um, you know, and it got marginally better, and then, you know, it comes back again, and I red redline it again. I've spent hours trying to teach someone planting design, you know, at the counter, and it just, you know, well, my big fear was that we set a precedent. Yeah, they'll be. You know, they could be back again. No, I know you talked about it being heavy-handed, but wouldn't it be appropriate if we? I mean, I think our role wouldn't necessarily to be to try to catch and enforce state regulations, but if we do see something, to to pass that on to you know licensing board or if, if somebody's stamping something that they're not supposed to. We can make it a standard condition of approval. Plan who would be stamped that? by a landscape architect? Who would who would do that? Would, would that be a planning department decision? Would that be a we policy? Could, we could add it with every motion. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> Put my <hand>. Jim, Jim <laughs> Doherty. <laughs> Jim Doherty. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Jim Doherty condition number 10. <laughs> Mr. Regulation. That's me. That, that and the elimination of porta potties, right? <laughs> My legacy. Look where that got me. <laughs> Big no. Any other board comments? Can I have a motion to adjourn? Moved by Mr. Dinwiddie, seconded by James, and we're out of here.